You are now checking out The Win Podcast Where the everyday people Are the celebrities So, so let's, let's get, get to, to know them, them. Wow <laughs> So I wrote I wrote a poem about uh, this very question. I can only say what I am rather than who, because I feel like the who and you and I is always becoming. Mm -hmm. So like we're always evolving and we're always growing into different people, but I know what I am and I'm a musician uh, who's striving to be an artist Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a country guy. And uh, I like to fish. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. That's awesome. Fishing is fun. <laughs> when when did the, the music uh, started for you when, of course, you know, listening to and being influenced by it, but then taking it to the level of uh, singing. singing and playing an instrument? When, when did it really hit to you like, wow, music is something very powerful that I love and want to take it further? Oh man. Um I remember being a very young child and always longing and wanting to play music. And um once I got the opportunity to get into school and to do like the school band thing and I picked up the saxophone, that was a moment that, you know, really hit me in my life because it was like that first moment in school where the teacher was calling me out like wow, great job, or everyone should, you know, listen or play with Duran or some Mm. shit like that. (laughs) And I was like, okay, maybe I'm doing something good. Maybe I got something going here. But the moment that really sealed the deal to me was I personally am a very introverted person and very shy. All my life I've been that way. And um, I always enjoyed singing, but I was very scared to get out and sing in front of people. And the very first time I got in front of church and sang a solo, it just went wild and crazy. I didn't expect, I didn't expect the, the reception that, that I got, but that was, uh, definitely the moment where I was like, maybe I could really do something with this thing. Did you feel <laughs> like, um, singing gave you a voice and a a way an outlet to express yeah express yourself uh to break out your shell sometimes yeah um singing has always been a way for me to comfort myself and to make myself feel good i guess so i agree yeah it definitely was that that access and i guess as an introvert yeah. Um, I need that little bit of oomph to get me out of my comfort zone to, yeah. I don't know, to, to, to keep a balance. So how show. did you, how did you slowly, I guess, began to be comfortable being uncomfortable? Of course, like, of course, repetition, but was there something that, you know, you was saying to yourself before you go on singing or, you just went after it. Was it, you know, when did you start being comfortable with the uncomfortable? Oh, man. <clears throat> I'm glad that I started playing saxophone at the age that I did, right around like 11, 12. Because mm. even at the beginning stages, like, you know, you have little honor band auditions and all these little things. And no, I'd be nervous as fuck for those things, man. But I'd get into the honor bands and stuff. But I think that was like, really great training you know like learning how to play nervous um and knowing that like i don't know how you feel whenever it comes to music but sometimes whenever your back is against the wall like you 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 have the fight or flight like it just yeah. really hits you so hard and um i faced that a lot of times in competitions and auditions many times before i even started to sing in public so i think that was the I think saxophone is the catalyst that helped me overcome my fear of singing in public, for mm-hmm. real. What did you learn yeah. a- a- about playing the saxophone that maybe it revealed something about yourself, if you if it did reveal anything? Because I felt like before the singing started, I could, I could sense the, the strong passion that you have about the sax, and there's, there's a love there that I automatically see when you talk about it. 
Yes, indeed, man. I took saxophone all the way to grad school. I played oh, it wow. all through college. Yeah, and I, I got a master's on that thing. And I was deeply into the classical world. But I always told my teachers that I didn't want to be a classical musician. I just wanted to be a musician. You know, like, I want to be that guy that can walk into any facet and learn and find my way, find my niche, find a way to fit in. And um, through all of that, I really discovered that through saxophone, that your sound is your muse. Your sound in music above all else, the tone, your, it, it reveals the char- your characteristic. It reveals your personality. Um, and that's something that I've been diving deep into, especially now, um, singing more than playing saxophone. Mm. Um, I try to apply that to myself all the time. I listen to a lot of singers and I, I try to get a lot of influence from them, but I'm constantly reminding myself, like, what is my sound? Like, what is my mm. muse? And, and how do I develop that? And how do I work that? Um, yeah. When you're singing, um, do you write your own songs? Or um, is it someone that writes them for you? And if you do write them, how does that come for you to you? If I do write what? Your, your own songs. Yeah. What was the last thing you said? If... Well, when you write your own songs, if you do, how they how does that come to you? How's that process for you? And what does it bring you? So, yeah. so before I met the indications, I only ever wrote one song before them. And it was just like a little throwaway song that I was doing with some friends. Uh whenever I met Blake and Aaron, they really and that was like one of those fight or flight moments where like my back was against the wall because I never wrote a song before and a completed song other than that one years before uh, with friends. And so I had to either do the fight or flight and I just, I chose to fight, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if fight is really the word because that sounds so like violent and shit. <laughs> I don't, maybe you I faced just chose it. to... Yeah, exactly. Maybe I just chose to not fight the wave, but I guess flow with it or, or, or move with it. And I learned a lot about songwriting from Blake and Aaron. That first mm-hmm. album, um, I've on, I only co-wrote the songs with them. Nothing was like my full, completed idea. Granted, I was in grad school for saxophone and I, I didn't think that I'd be a soul singer. Mm -hmm. Um, So I didn't really take it as seriously as I did whenever we did American Love Call, the second album. And there's a couple of songs on there that I fully wrote myself that I'm really proud of. Um, It feels like this whole songwriting thing is new to me. And um, I feel really blessed right now because they're just turning out. Um, Where I find my inspiration is really in silence mm-hmm. and it, it's so it's so crazy it's so crazy it's just like i love living out here in the country and i'm pretty sure this is where i'm gonna stay for the rest of my life but i love going out on my porch and hearing the stillness and it's mm-hmm. almost like my brain hits like a radio frequency where this melody hits me in the head and i'm just like da, 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 da. Or something, I'm just like, oh shit, let me go grab my phone <laughs> oh, nice. and record this right now. You know, because I feel, I don't know how you guys feel, but yeah. like, if I don't record it right then and there. Oh, yeah. yeah. For me, I have to like, that, write it. yeah, just as fast as that wave hits my head, it's gone. Yeah, because creativity and inspiration can come out of nowhere. You yeah. have to like grab it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And there's <laughs> been a couple of diamonds that I've lost in that yeah. process. For sure. Mm, don't I, come back. Yeah, no, I learned. I, I'm sorry. I was gonna say I can agree because in the beginning I lost a couple things like that, and then, I, and then 
uh, I had to realize, you know, I have my phone. Let me just hum it. At least I, even, whether I flush out the idea now, at least I have it. I could do it later. But just to, or for me, yeah. it's the shower. It's just something about the shower and hearing the water. And I'm just there. And I and then the, also like the acoustics in the shower. Oh, A lot goodness. of the times my ideas, I'm just there. And I'm like, oh, snap. Like, this would be great. Or this would be dope. I'm like, let, let me let me uh, hurry up with the shower and get the melody. Yes, indeed. I feel that, man. For me, the shower is just singing time. I'm like singing Luther Band drums and nice. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, I was gonna say the reason why I asked that too is because what we've seen you sing live and you have this passion when you sing. It's like like I feel what you're feeling. Like it's just this passion and and fire that comes with your voice and it's so powerful. So I just wanted to let you not you know, let you know that that you know I felt it, like I feel it. And I also feel like you're in your own world. Yeah. There's times like where you give it back to the audience and you connect with them, but then it's like you take it back to yourself to, to almost like you're in the countryside. You're just by yourself in the, in the, in the music, in your own world singing. Oh, man. <laughs> it's <laughs> beautiful. You just get on the stage so much. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, so I tell you what. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go. No, I was going to no, say. I was just, I was... <laughs> <laughs> you go, you go, you go. You're the guest. Oh, man. I was just going to say. Uh, just reading and learning a lot from a lot of these soul musicians. There's so many great live videos of all the greats um, on YouTube that you, that's, that I would just like study and study and study. And I guess I learned just like everything has an intention and every word, every inflection. And I'm learning, but, you know, I'm trying to do the best that I can. Uh, I, on the stage and it's just good to hear that it's translating and people are getting it so how much crazy. love thank you no, no thank, thank you. you thank you how crazy hold on we're lagging a little bit yeah so hold let's on. hold on let me check the one uh, are we good yeah okay. if it if it lags a little bit i still have a way where i could just edit it together we'll just take a break and then until the wi-fi gets better and then i'll edit it and post. okay um so how crazy was it for you that all of a sudden life is taking you on this journey where, you know, from what I read and also heard that, you know, you guys were just creating music in the beginning in the, you know, in the basement. It was just for fun, for the love of it. And all of a sudden now you're two albums in and you're touring mm. all around the world. Like how crazy was that for you to almost like pinch yourself and accept this reality? Like, yo, a couple of years ago I was like home and now I'm like, another country singing <laughs> man it it felt incredible and honestly it was a dream filled i'll never forget finishing the very last tune of the first album in blake's apartment and we went out onto his roof and we're just sitting out there looking at the sky looking at the bloomington little bitty skyline he was like, man, it'd be amazing if we could get this project to Europe. And right there, that was like the seed mm. that was planted. And I believed in the dream. And I, I I, did everything I could. Blake did everything he could. Aaron did. And all the other guys as well. Like, we all did everything that we could just to make the dream come true. Mm. We really grinded and we really hustled and we tried to hone in our craft and really make something that uh, felt timeless. Yeah, I uh, think that's... All you guys have this uh, appreciation and love for soul music. Was that the motivation to, and also studying from the greats and having influences... Was that the motivation and also uh, the power to like, you know, we can't fuck around. We like even when it came to the second to me, the second album, 
is a is a classic album. Like yeah. it's you you know from the beginning to the end, you could put it on the record player. You don't have to skip a track. You know, it's one of those rare diamonds that you have. But also, I love I told Kelly Finnegan too his album that he came out with is another classic soul album Ooh. that you could put from the beginning to the end. And to me, I was just so happy and proud that music is like that's being created. Because I always said, man, I wish that I was a fly on the wall. Or I, I lived <laughs> in, another, in, a, in the past to see these great artists. So to me, to watch you guys perform now, and I'm young and you're young, and, and you guys killing it, oh, it was like, it, it made my heart smile. Because I'm like, I'm watching history right now for me. Yeah, that, it feels like we, we go back in time. So, you know. <laughs> but it's like, for me, it's like, I'm so proud that it's happening now. now. It's like, and there's the appreciation of soul music. And so I just want to know that, like, you know, was the motivation that we was making these music to like, yo, we can't fuck around. We, if we're going to do this, we got to do this the right way, you know? Man, I think with that first album, it was all, we were, we were just doing it because we love soul music. Before we even started playing music together, uh, Blake would invite me over and they would play 45s for me and um, and such. And I would show them songs. And then I came home during a break. I came back to Louisiana and I was going to run my grandmother's house. And I found all these really cool 45s and I would bring them mm. back up to Indiana. Mm. We play those back and forth. And eventually it led us into uh, playing some music together. And I think with that first album, it just felt so free and mm. lighthearted. We we all felt that we had something and we definitely wanted to be what we are today. But it was just a dream, you know. And uh, with the second album, it we just felt the pressure, you oh, know. Okay. Like, I think we felt the, we felt the pressure to uh, really elevate and and show growth and i guess through pressure diamonds are made and um american love call will always be a little treasure for me Mm -hmm. um it always will yeah how how, how did you guys uh almost like even though the pressure was there i would still assume that you guys still had like fun recording the process so like how was it the second time around being back in the studio, not having a focus of like, Hey, we're not trying to go for like a perfect album, but we want an album that is going to succeed the first because it's always great to have goals. So what was the the studio sessions like now to still remind yourself, let's have fun. Let's think about how we all came together and keep on pushing through. Man, the second time was way stressful than the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was because on top of recording the album, here we are touring 200 days out of the year. Oh, so, right. yeah, so like you you get into the studio and everything's like cha 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 cha. Time 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 schedule. This flute player is supposed to come in at this time. Heart player is coming in on this day. This time, after the studio session, we got to go to this man's house to mm. arrange string parts. It was very strenuous. It was super stressful. Um, two like two days into the recording session, mm-hmm. I found out my grandmother raised me, and I found out that a uh, hospice was giving her like a like a couple of days to live, mm-hmm. and so I had to choose whether to stay in New York City or fly down to the South and spend the last days with her. Mm. I knew that she would have wanted me to stay. Mm. And so I did. But mm. it was tough. It right. was, yeah. it was, uh, that, yeah, it was a couple of moments where, you know, I would be sitting in the studio and I just excuse myself and go to the bathroom, cry for a little bit, and then go back and right. just mm. try to keep at it, you know? So it was really tough, man. This time around was was very difficult. And we all, and I think it was all tough for us because it was a whole new experience. Yeah. You know, we were used to recording in the basement or recording in Blake's apartment or some shit like that. But then all of a sudden we were in this huge studio with 
um, a studio engineer that's accompanying us and all these grand rooms and really expensive mics. It was something totally new. Mm. And we all thought that um, this time around for our third album, that we'd have like a better grasp on how like like working in a studio is and, and how to be more efficient at it. And then bam, Corona hits and like warts <laughs> all our plans. Yeah. You know, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are you doing now? Like that you're more home and uh, are you like, are you working on writing more music? Yeah, for sure. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, whenever I realized that I was going to be home for a while, I was like, man, I'm going to do all the stuff that I never could do on my normal schedule. So I started a garden. I started exercising a bunch. Mainly I started exercising a bunch because I felt like my life was unbalanced. Yeah. I've been reading this book called The Herbal Male. And this guy talks about like the body, mind and spirit and how there's a balance and uh, we should focus on each one to become uh, a supreme being or mm -hmm. I guess a balanced individual. And, you know, with music, I feel like with music, I use my mind a lot. It's definitely something super spiritual to me. And of course, I'm using my body, but am I listening to my body? So mm -hmm. I, I've been taking a lot of time to exercise and to write some wrongs. I don't sleep in a bed anymore. I sleep on the floor. Mm. <laughs> Is that by um, choice? I really like. Yeah, it's totally by choice. I really <laughs> like it. Um, I don't know if I'll ever go back. Oh, um, really? But it's definitely helped out with my neck and my back. Hmm. Um, I should try that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, just just exercising a bunch. Um, I told myself that at the, at the seventh month of this year, I would get back into music and start writing. And it's so crazy, like the universe, like just threw these gigs at me, like out of nowhere, these people started hitting me up. It was like, hey, even you, Rick, you hit me up. You was like, hey, let's do this podcast. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, cool. <laughs> like, I, like I, I guess I'm on the right track. I guess, you know. I'm feeling what the universe is pushing me to do. And it's been really beautiful uh, getting back into music. I'm going to try to hopefully learn some guitar in this time because I have one, but I haven't really dedicated the time to it. And I feel like it would elevate my songwriting if I do learn it. It seems like uh, during this time, like, you know, for the past couple of years, life has been so hectic from you from, you know, dealing with family, uh, you know, mishaps and you know being on the road and creating music learning all these new things that now is the time for you to and don't forget about yourself to like hey let's do the things that we love to do and also let's start building this repertoire and this system so we don't forget and lose track again once the world comes back into the picture and drive us all crazy and again. Go, your time now you, this again yeah yes. you, you build mm -hmm. this uh this this zone within yourself that mm -hmm. you that you need it and it happens with anybody when you're torn like that or doing a lot of crazy things you you tend to go off track a little bit with yourself and just go with the flow and this kind of like grounds you now like for when that time comes you're kind of it'll help i hope some people to look back and be like wait now i know how to grace myself during the time when it's like all rushy rush yes yeah I told myself that I wouldn't come out of this thing the same person. I want to evolve. I exactly. want to elevate myself, you know? Yeah, especially so. since, like, I would imagine, too, like, being someone who's very introverted and now you're in this lifestyle that pretty much puts you out there in front of a lot of people, new people, audiences, and uh, a lifestyle that you, especially come from the countryside, very relaxed, peaceful you know it's not that he hectic all the time and now you're in this world so it's like you have to retrace those steps and find the limitations within yourself of everything and know and being true yes. to what you love to do and yourself yes man and it's all a process it's all a process i just take it day by day man 
And like I said earlier um, in the interview, I'm becoming always, always. What, what was something that, because it seemed like your, your grandmother was a big influence on in you as well. What was what was a lesson that, you know, sticks to you to this day that when you think about her or it'll come up and like, oh, OK. Um, whenever somebody insults you, fail to notice. That was a big thing that she would say. Say wait, say that again. I was, um, when someone insults you, fail fail to notice it. Oh, okay. Uh, she always say ignore <laughs> ignore when people say bad things about you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's definitely been something that's been uh, a big a big thing for me for sure. Was uh, your family supportive in the move of you like you know doing the music and like now? going on the road i would assume now because like they saw the result of it but like in the beginning before <laughs> when you started uh yeah they were they weren't interested at all mm-hmm. my brother was my brother was we were like a year apart and we're very close but everybody else was just like oh duran's doing this music thing again yeah. <laughs> going all of you know so what and then what? they start to see Go. No, go ahead, go ahead, finish. Go, you, you, you said they were starting uh, to see, go ahead. Yeah, and then, like, especially my dad, like, I think him seeing me on TV, like, after the 10 o'clock news on the Jimmy Kimmel show, just, like, totally flipped a switch for him. Mm. He was like, whoa, Doreen's really doing something now. <laughs> and that's, like, the first time ever in my music life, ever. I got that kind of acknowledgement or wink from him, and it mm. felt so good. It felt nice. so good. I'm glad you got yeah. that moment, yeah, by the way, because I know as artists, Thanks, man. I know as artists, like we, you know, in the beginning, we look for approval with our parents because we want them to support this. But at the same time, we take yes. when they give mm-hmm. us advice, we take it in the beginning. I know for me, we took it very negative, like, "Well, you're not supporting my dreams. It's what I want to do." But it comes from dumb, like you know. You know, get a nine to five job. This is what's gonna help you. You know, this is this yeah. is how you're this gonna make know. it. This is what yeah. they know. And like here we are, you know, being the total opposite. The total opposite <laughs> and being rebels in a sense of like, no, we can make this yeah. happen. Or we can, we can maintain the office job, but I'm do, doing what I love full time as well. I'm gonna juggle both until I die. Like, you don't yep. get it that this is what I love. It brings mm-hmm. me joy. I don't want to be miserable. Yes. So I can un- I, and I know when you receive that moment, even though you was probably wasn't looking for it anymore, it, it hit you different okay. and it melt it felt good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, man. It really did. What 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 made you keep going though? Like what made you not give up at this music in general with the singing, saxophone? What made you keep pushing through? Uh the dream that my 12 year old self had you know i dreamed of seeing the world i wanted to i want to really do it and um i i i I wanted to prove to myself that i could do it Mm. um and there's still so many more things that i want to do um and i'm just taking it one step at a time but yeah man i it's it's a little weird, but like sometimes I'll be on the stage like Santa Barbara Bowl or some huge place like that. And I'm standing there, I'm looking out at the empty seats, and I just imagine my little twelve year old self standing mm. right next to me. That's so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like and I'm just like, Man, we did it. Mm. We here, oh, bro. That's we so here. Beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. I really do. <laughs> well, what I was gonna, well, you pretty much. Said, I was gonna say, if you could talk to your twelve year old self, uh, yeah. you know, what would you <laughs> tell them? But I think you pretty much did. Like, look, we I did it. I saw it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> You're embracing your childhood. Um, yeah, I got to. I got to. Now, moving forward, like you know, thinking of plans for the future with the third album, stuff like that. Like, what are some things you want to improve at? It doesn't even have to be. Maybe you know. I know you're working on yourself as a human being. But what are certain things you want to improve now when, when you go back into the studio? I'll start working on the third album. What is something you like reflecting on? It's like, you know what? I want to do this a little bit better. I want to do that a little bit better. Um, I've been working on my voice a lot. 
but I've been trying because I'm a I'm a I'm a guy with a big voice, yeah. and I've been trying to learn how to be a little bit more nuanced. And I guess what it took for me is to like find singers who can do the big thing, but also be subtle. And I've been listening to a lot of Dionne Warwick, Jackie oh, Wilson, um, folks like that. And they've been really helping me out a bunch. Mm. I feel like they're like my teachers right now or so, mm. or something. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, no, they're, they, they definitely they, their are, spirit yeah. is definitely uh, helping you. <laughs> you know, and yes. sending you messages through your mm-hmm. music. I believe in that 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And um, learning from them and learning how to be a little bit more of a nuanced singer. And also, like, I want to write all the horn parts. I want to write all of the string parts this time around. Um, and I want to produce as well. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to put more on my plate because I, I believe that I'm ready for it. You ever think yeah. about one day uh, almost doing like a, a, a solo, not breaking up the indications, but like you doing your own solo project, you know, <laughs> of your of your music? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, because I feel like right now the three core songwriters of the group are Blake, myself, and Aaron. And together we created this universe that is the indications. But Aaron has his own universe. Blake has his own universe. And as do I. And so I'm working on a little something. Um, but there's no plans. Just a couple of songs in my, in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> We'll hear them soon enough. <laughs> how was yes, it, indeed. How was it uh, growing up, uh, and how has the environment that you grew up in uh, helped you to be the man that you are today? Because I can imagine, like, how you grew up, you know, totally different to, like, now touring all around the world. So what was so important of where you grew up, and how did that help you in your life, where you're at? Where it up? Um... For the first 13 years of my life, I grew up while I was living with my dad. Um, my mom left when I was three. Um, and I hadn't seen her until uh, late last year. It was the very first time I saw her again. Wow. Yeah. Um, How was that? We yeah, lived. I want to him finish. It, it was. It was really beautiful. It was really nice. And I could tell that it meant a lot to her. It definitely meant a lot to me. Um, but she's my mom, but it's, it's, we don't have that. We don't have that, that. connection. Yeah. yeah. She's your yeah. mom, but not yeah. since she didn't raise you like your grandmother, she doesn't hold the yeah. mom title. I, I, yeah. I have a, I can relate and I'll, I'll be vulnerable. How? I'll be vulnerable too if you, because uh, I have a story that you know my my dad pretty much left me us when we was like thirteen, fourteen, and I di- I didn't get to see him until maybe like three years ago. I went to go look for him, and through you know the spirits and stuff like that, and me pushing it, we connected, and he was living somewhere else. I didn't have his social. I didn't have none of that stuff, but we end up finding each other, and I had that moment to wow. to uh, speak. And to tell him how I felt that, you know, it's okay that you left. You know, you're, you're my father. I'm just coming to you to let you know how I felt and growing up. And I forgive you. It's fine. But it's not going to be like like how he was. Like, we don't have this connection. But I just wanted to make yeah. peace for myself because I forgive myself to hold on to all this anger that I had towards you. And I gave you all this power when yeah. I didn't need to. So it was a great moment. And I knew it was important to him. And I just, you know, closed that that journey. So I, I can understand how you, I can relate to what your journey as well. Yes, indeed, man. Um, I appreciate that a lot. And, you know, uh, sharing that connection with you, it, it feels good, but it also feels wild, you know? Yeah. It really does. And I think that was really, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that's really powerful that you 
were able to talk to your dad and tell him that you forgave him. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times, uh, you know, a lot of times, too, we have to realize it's not our job to forgive them. More importantly, we have to like forgive ourselves first because we don't want to carry all this yeah. baggage. They just left for whatever reasons, you know, and they have their own journey. But a lot of times, we, yes, for some indeed. reason, we carry more of the brunt of it because, you know, not not blaming ourselves, but we just like what if could have and we have all this anger that builds up and, re- and we don't realize until the moment we take the time to really like take responsibility and just forgive ourselves and then, you know, take our power back. We're like, you did what you did, but now I'm ending it, <laughs> you know? For yes. Me. <laughs> yes. And, and, and then if we rebuild a, a, a relationship, if it's meant, if it's meant, if it's not, it's not, it's okay. It's fine. You know, I'm making peace with it because I'm not going to. Yes, it. indeed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so you still, um, I wanted to go back to what you were saying that you met your mom, but like he, you were talking about your child, like how growing up helped you yeah. to where you are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my mom was out of the picture and um, my dad had this trailer um, uh, a couple of streets away from where I am right now. And I mean, like we were living in poverty. We were. We were pretty poor. And, but, you know, like, like most American parents, you know, like a lot of us can say that we didn't have much, but our parents made sure that, you know, we never wanted for anything. And Mm -hmm. so my dad always did the best, best that he could for us. And my grandmother, she was in the picture and she was the light in the darkness, you know, like with, With the with the addiction and the violence and all those different things that were surrounding me and my mm-hmm. brother and my sister, my grandmother was there. She was always the soulless. Um, my dad's alcohol- alcoholism got pretty bad whenever mm-hmm. I was about like 13 years old, and so I moved in with my grandmother for like the last four years of me being at home before I moved away to college. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I learned from being here was to stay humble, mm. you know, like n- I will never forget where I came from, mm. you know, never, ever forget where I came from. And sometimes it puts me in tears, like after I, I won't even, I'll never forget it. After the North Sea Jazz Festival, mm. it was like the biggest lineup. It was like the most amazing lineup to me because uh the roots were playing maxwell was wow. playing roy hargrove rest in peace uh really cool uh jazz singers jazz me as uh horn uh cecil mclaurin savant and then my name was right there right along with them and we played wow. the show and it was so amazing and i got off stage and i just thought about that trailer you mm. know and i was i just busted out crying you know just like mm. I was like, man, come a long way. It took a lot to get here, but I'm here, you know? So I just want to stay humble. That's that's blessings to you, man. That's a beautiful story. I'm I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for sharing, you know, being so vulnerable that I'm able to connect with this and learn from it as well. So man I appreciate that, man. Thank you. That's awesome. And I think that's I think that's a beautiful trait that I always appreciate with other artists and human beings is just being humble and being and grounded and grounded just and never forgetting reachable. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I could be doing yeah. all this stuff, but I'm still shit the way you shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, yeah. I take a shot. I'm yeah. like, Oh my God, we got the rant tonight. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you, he said, yeah. I was like, he said, yeah. <laughs> And then getting to know oh, you is so like, glad. oh my God, this is like oh, amazing. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> cool, I'm so glad. That's dope. <laughs> um, what What it was something that you? I know you learned. Um, how I you learned from Aaron and L- other guys as well in the group about songwriting. What did you guys learn about like working with each other? Because I, you know, when you work, I know, like I'm, I, I have like I love my work ethic, and sometimes I. I tend to do things on my own or if I find someone that works just as hard as me, I'm like, it's always a great match. So, but here's, is like, you guys are all from 
different places. And of course, you probably felt the chemistry. What did you guys learn about each other working together to make this happen? You know, because it was meant to, for you guys mm-hmm. to be together. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I feel like it all ebbs and flows. Um, that's one thing that I had to learn and realize. Uh, and it, it, it kind of feels like yin and yang sometimes, you know, like, um, some, someone may be at the peak of their, like, creativity and another person may be feeling down and low. Um, another person may be feeling some other type of way. I don't mm-hmm. know, but it always ebbs and flows. Um, I also learned that in working with a group, um, your, um, it's way easier to create, a or achieve a goal, uh, together than, than rather alone. Mm. But that being said, you will have to compromise and then compromise, uh, when you do make a compromise, everyone, isn't happy Mm. um that's something that we all learn um and and it's something that uh constantly uh well i won't say constantly but it occurs often and we have to get through those hills um but i think we all are learning about each other still because we were young men back at back whenever this first album was coming out and now we are adults living, trying to live adult lives. And, mm. and, it's, and it's a little bit unsettling now, you know, like we're yeah. all trying to find our place. And I really do feel like we all are kind of settling in somewhat, some way. But um, we're still learning mm. um, about each other, for sure. Nice. What's, um, what's one of the major challenges you've had to face and how were you able to overcome it? Um, I think one of the major challenges, um, I've had to face is that, um, within this industry, I'm a minority, you know, like getting these white men to hear what I have to say. Um, cause I've realized having a seat at the table, is just not enough, Mm. you know, like. I realized that my introverted, meek, humble, quiet country self ain't going to cut it in the industry. Um, I really had to get out of my comfort zone mm-hmm. and, and push myself to be a little bit ex- a little bit more extroverted just to make sure that my voice was being heard, you know, um, because it it could be really easy to get stepped upon over in this thing and um that's something that i'm not trying to do and i guess there's a line of being a diva and not being a diva or whatever and i'm not saying that you know being a shitty person um it's cool to do because you're an artist but i do understand like having that attitude or that aura just to make sure that you're getting the respect that you deserve out of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one thing that I, I really, I've really been saying. I can only imagine what it's like for women mm-hmm. artists in this industry, you know, like especially women of color. Um, Cause I feel it a little bit, you know, yeah. doing my thing. I think that's beautiful. That's just yeah. standing up for yourself and being true to who you are. And, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a line of, you know, being respected and and making sure you get what you earned and not trying to be so sell yourself short, you know, because in this industry, a lot of us gives us, give ourselves away. We sell ourselves short just for this, uh, this thing called fame or money Mm -hmm. or whatever, but integrity and humbleness and being true to who and what you are means so much more. And it should be honored more rather than just, whatever and they look at you like well who the fuck are you because we have other people that (laughs) just don't care about this stuff and Mm -hmm. they're chasing the money but 
Yes, indeed. It's, 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 it's tough, but when you respect yourself and honor yourself and you know what you're going for, and it's not coming from a place of ego and pride, it's coming from a place of, you know, truth, you know, and respecting yourself, it will, it will always go a long way. You know, it hurts more when you lie to yourself and yeah. uh, disown your, your spirit. Yes, indeed. So, Duran, um, we're going to move over to the last segment. We're almost done with the interview. And the segment is called Let's Look Inside. And there's three questions for the segment. And the first question is, what do you love about yourself? Ooh, <laughs> let's see. What do I love about... I love that... The I love that the chatter around me doesn't discourage me. Mm. Um, it doesn't... I love that I have that, that will to... To not let it get to me to make me want to quit. Mm. Can you share yeah. some of the chatter? I know. You, I, can you <laughs> I'm share like, what's some? The I'm like, who the fuck talked about the rain? <laughs> I, I, I got a little mad right here. <laughs> 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 uh, what, what, what do they say? I hope it's good shit they say about the rain. Like, I it is it chatter in your head? Like, you is, know, is insecurities? The, is the chatter in your head or, or yeah. is the chatter of like people? Um, just like people, like people around, um, whenever I was starting to do music, okay. um, and starting to take it serious, seriously, a lot of people around me in my community was like, what are you doing music for? That's for white people. Okay. I was like, Got what? <laughs> Music's not for white people? Like, <laughs> yeah, that makes Have you been listening to like, music? <laughs> yeah, I was what like, I guess he's you... playing sax. <laughs> yeah, I guess he saw me playing saxophone and uh, doing classical music and doing jazz and all that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, I remember like this one time I was working with my dad out out doing like some yard work and one of his friends drove up and his friend thought that I was my brother. And um, my dad was like, no, that's Duran. And his friend goes, oh, I thought this one didn't like to work. <laughs> and I was, and I was just like, I was like, what? <laughs> like, really, Dad? Like, really? You told him I don't like to work? Like, <laughs> come on, man! Like, like I'm trying my hardest out yeah. here, you know. Like, but I just didn't let that shit get in my head. Yeah, I just kept going, man. And even if you know people thought that I was absolutely crazy, and uh, I don't know, buck wild. I didn't care. I just wanted to achieve my dream That's and I, i'm really proud of myself yeah. for for that we're proud so of i you guess too. i love my tenacity mm. yeah and always think about that 12 year old kid man yeah. always make, dreaming and making yes. it happen and you're insp you're in inspiring us but a lot of um young people who are probably from your town and want to do what you do you know what i mean yeah um yes so, indeed so the second question uh is what does the American dream mean to you? Ooh. I think the American dream to me would, would be reparations for all people who are from the African diaspora that were taken, mm. that who ancestors were taken away unjustifiably from their land. Mm. I, I really wholeheartedly believe that America needs to come to terms with with the fact that you know our history isn't clean, and um, still to this day, people of color are suffering in horrible ways, man, in, yeah. in just the most devastating ways. And mm -hmm. um, oh man, I just really do believe that reparations would um fulfill my american dream mm -hmm. last question is if the average lifespan was 40 years old how would you live your life differently um honestly if i had i'm 30 right now if i had 10 years left i'd probably uh after this third album i probably would like quit the band and like go to culinary arts school and like 
learn how to be a butcher or something. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I was going to ask you, what are you doing? <laughs> I was going to ask you too. What is what, what, is, a, what, is, what is a hobby that yeah. would that was besides music and stuff? What is something that you love to do? Um, I really enjoy gardening. I love fishing. I love to read. Um, and I like to meditate a lot. And yeah, man. Nice, cool. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really nice, relaxing, having a little bit of off time to to do a lot of these things. What, 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 uh, what have you been learning about gardening? Because I feel like gardening is I like love a garden. She, she has. A, I mean, she, I don't, I have plants, indoor house plants. I don't have a garden because we're but in she the has city. A gift. Like she has a green but thumb. I like, love plants. She talks to her plants. And, like, <laughs> yeah, they grow so. I big. name them. <laughs> so like. Oh, that's beautiful. What have you learned <laughs> about like gardening? Like what is so beautiful about it? Because I know this takes a lot of discipline. I think also for me, just thinking about it, like you're watching something like grow in front of you that you have to take care of and, you know, nurture and give love to. So what, what did that, what did gardening bring to you in your life? Oh man, it's for a lot of peace. Um, I think there is something it it speaks to the soul and in that language I cannot put into English, but there's something about like raising something, bringing life, giving or like cultivating life. Mm. And I don't know how to explain that like in words, but it really does speak to my soul and it gives my soul a lot of peace. Um, and I really do like seeing how plants communicate to tell you what they need. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. mm-hmm. yeah, and I and I feel like I feel like that is something that I could definitely cross over and tie into my everyday life. I guess trying to notice, you know, uh, people's movements and and gestures and and energy. And I, I really, I really been loving my plants. I got some cucumbers. I got Ooh. some citrus trees growing, got a fig tree, onions, bell peppers, watermelons, um, and cauliflower. And and I go over. Yeah, we're gonna have to visit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys are always welcome to come down the yeah. bayou, baby. I'm all some crafts for y'all. Or Yo, that'd be great. <laughs> you are now checking out the Win Podcast. Where the everyday people are the celebrities. So, so let's, let's get, get to, to know, know them. them.